TNA's Bound for Glory is what day is it? Because yeah, I'm a little out of date here because I, again I boycotted the No Surrender pay per view just because the fact it was on 9/11. It's just ridiculous to me that they actually did that. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But it is um, October 16th, 2011. Um, you know, this card so far doesn't actually look that bad, because Robert Roode came, apparently won the, again, I didn't watch No Surrender, so I'm just going from what I, I watched on the show tonight. Bobby Roode won the Bound for Glory series, which means he gets to face the world champion, Kurt Angle, at Bound for Glory for the world title. Now, this is actually one of the first things that TNA has done right in a very long time. Besides the fact that tonight, we also got to see Ric Flair, which is Sting. Which I think they could have done better, but you know, at least we got to see it. Even given, hell, even given 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, they could have gave him fucking 20 without those promos for next week. But you know, you know, it's fucking TNA, what are you going to do? But, you know, with that limited time, they made an amazing match, even though, I'm going to say it right now, Flair got screwed. Brass Knucks, you know, you know having their slow counting, over, uh, Immortal coming out, fucking Anderson coming out. You ruined a great match just because of Immortal and Anderson, let alone Earl Hebner doing his classic screw jobs. And I, no, I'm not. I'm not saying Sting shouldn't have won, but di it's different circumstances. Hell, the guy's career was on the right, right, the line. I understand that, but still, <sighs> normally a brass knucks or some kind of cheating from Flair would have, would have suit a victory. In the end, it's happened before, but not in TNA. You'd expect that shit in TNA. I'll just tell you that much. But regardless, we now have Sting versus Hogan, Bound for Glory. Now, like I said, if Ric Flair and Sting, 20 years ago, this would have been an amazing match. And it still was today, as Sting and Flair proved it. But um, with the recent, and over the years, back surgeries with Hogan, I honestly don't think this will be a very good match. In fact, I don't care. I honestly don't care because, uh, to be honest, Hogan and Bischoff's contracts are expiring soon, so they will probably leave TNA, which is probably why they want to do this one match with Sting, which kind of makes sense now that I think about it. But regardless, I don't care about that one. But what I do care about, going back to the main event, Robert Roode, one of the first things they actually done right for TNA. They fucking push him, and also, um, you know, there's rumors circling that, you know, WWE wants to get their tag division back. So they're trying to sign tag teams like Beer Money, whose contracts are expiring as well. Uh, the teams like the King of Wrestling, and just, just several others, I, I don't have that off the top of my head, but those are the main two I remember. Now, if that is true, then... They might as well give Robert Roode a title because he hasn't had a world title shot. This is practically his first ever world title shot. I don't know if he's going to win, but I want him to because this is one. Of, this is one of the best things that could happen for this company that could turn it around. And speaking of turning it around, it was basically. A shoot on Jeff Hardy night, which made the show, in my opinion. And I didn't, I didn't even know Austin Aries was the X Division champion. He won the title at Bound for Glory. Not, I'm sorry about No Surrender, which I again didn't watch just because the fact it was on nine eleven. But it'll be interesting. You know, Tina's actually getting a little better, which isn't saying much. But still, it's going in the right direction at least. But uh, to win this match, I would have to go with Robert Roode. 
just because uh, I want him to win. You know, he deserves it. He really does. And beating Kurt Angle, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, would only help him in the long run. Now, there's a final match that was announced. It's a fatal four-way knockout match for the title. But every week, they will be adding another person because it's what they call the Queen's Qualifiers. And this week, Velvet Sky beat Angelina Love, which means right now, it is currently Velvet Sky versus Winter for the title. There will be two more names, and over the next two weeks, they will be doing these matches. Uh, I think uh, next week, it's a test marker versus Mickey James. So whoever wins that will advance. But what I also like, and of course I'm not going to comment on that match now because uh, we don't know who the other two people are, but what I do like is Robert Roode facing each member of Fortune leading up to the world title match. <laughs> That's actually a smart move by Kurt Angle. That's actually brilliant. That actually makes it TNA watchable. Because you don't know who's going to face him next week. And these potential matches are great. I love it. And, and I haven't told this part of shit in TNA in years. I'm actually glad I didn't watch the fucking pay-per-view. Because it, it would have been a fucking train wreck. But what I will say is Bound for Glory, one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year, is October 16th, 2011. Watch it. Or, you know, get a stream, whatever. Or just or just watch it the fucking bag on Rouge, though. I don't fucking care. That's what I normally do to watch the show. It's comic relief normally, but it was actually good tonight. Which isn't, again, isn't saying much. But, TNA's Bound for Glory. Impact, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Impact Wrestling, I don't care. Pay-per-view. October 16th.